Uh, welcome to this conference. So guys, uh, it took us 45 years to write this book, and it will take you 45 minutes to finally crack the Quebec code. We have found, you know, that Quebecers are more different than you might think, but they're not as different as they think. This is important to understand. You know, it has never been easy for Canadians living outside Quebec to understand Quebec differences. Who are they? Why are they so ambivalent? You know, and we're doing a lot of political poll. It's 1% of my business, but 99% of my trouble. But we know that when the voting intention move across Canada by 2%, people are hysterical. What's happening? In Quebec, it's moving by 15%, and we say it's a moody population, you know? Why they are so ambivalent? Why your market share is lower in Quebec? How can you convince Quebecers to buy your product and services? So I offer you this webinar for free, but also I offer you this book free of charge. We will send our book to all who attended this conference. The main reason that it's a gift to Canadians. That's why we're, we wrote that book with my co-authors, Christian Bourg and uh, Jacques Nantel, to better understand and appreciate each other. So let's start with a question. You know, pollster always asks questions. So I have a question for you. From a cultural point of view, who do Quebecers feel closest to? Is it France? Is it English Canada? Is it United States? So let's take a few seconds just to think what will be the answer? Because of course I did a poll across Canada, but specifically in Quebec for this question. What's the answer? So the answer is one third, one third, one third. This is, this is an important information because you know this means that only a third of Quebecers say they feel closest to French culture. This also means that two thirds do not feel close to French culture. We're not French speaking who live in North America. We're North American spe people who speak French. This is a huge difference, you know? Every Quebecer is, is an hybrid. Most of us are coming from France, 80% of the population, living in an English society with the American way of life. So a lot of different influences. So we've been polling for years. You know, Leger has uh, 600 employees. I created this company in the 80s. So, and we have done a thousand of surveys every year. Overall, we measure, this is the first step that you will appreciate, that 71% of our attitudes and behavior, behaviors are similar to the rest of the country, 71%. But this also means that 29% is different. Understanding these 29% is understanding the differences. Our book, our uh, presentation today will focus on this 29%. So we use a scientific approach, you know, new techniques to measure that. It's not only a question and answer, it's more than that. We use what we call the semiometry. So we evaluate the emotion on 400 different words. For example, if I say immigration, is it positive or negative for you? If I say soldier, is it positive or negative? Love. And so, so we may measure it as 400 different words, and we use a factor correspondence analysis to measure the differences between French Quebec and English Canada. And we also have a special measure for English Quebec, and you will know, you will understand they're, they're closer to French Quebecers' habits than English Canada habits. So these, this analysis generates the seven group of words, seven different groups of words representing these differences. So we're going to introduce you today to these seven identity threats. So these seven differences are so crucial for your understanding. And of course, this is not a complacent book saying Quebecers are fantastic. No, no, it's based on facts. We found that three identities are positive one is neutral three are negative so we'll sh we'll present you uh, these information so no one outside quebec could write this book without being criticized <laughs> just quebecers could say something because some elements are not positive at the end quebecers are not better or worse they are different 
So I would like to introduce my co-authors uh, and associate Christian Beau, who will present you the positive threats, and also uh, Jacques Martel also will present the others. Christian, up to you. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Uh, I'm just happy to be presenting the positive traits, Jacques, but I'll, I'll let you handle the other ones in a minute. Um, Jean-Marc mentioned how we use semiometry uh, to basically come up with value sets where we could see either French Quebecers over-indexing or under-indexing compared to other Canadians, and just use this subset of words as an example, what you see on screen now, and just quickly glance at it and pick out a word that you have the most positive reaction to when you're actually looking at it. Now, if you multiply that by 400 words, and if you multiply it by several thousand Canadians who answered the survey, we end up with this. Look at how uh, if French Quebecers over-index positively on some keywords. Affection, ingenuity, sensual, emotion, tolerance, and warmth. And these are words where comparatively, English Canada over-indexed positively compared to Quebec. Moral, honesty, God, stranger, marriage, soldier, savings. Now, if you multiply again that exercise by 400 words and you, you basically look at the, the mathematical models coming out of the machine, uh, what you get are basically clusters of values where we found that they were distinctions that statistically made sense. Again, this is based on factual evidence on over 5,000 points of data and this type of analysis to provide the seven sort of key identity traits that we're, uh, we're showing in the book. And each of them have a value. They have a purpose. They can show us lessons as marketers in terms of better understanding this market and better talking to Quebecers uh, to try to convince them about how good our product is, our service is, or how good our idea uh, may be if you are in the PR or, or political realm. So let's keep moving on. The first trait, which again, when you looked at the total mathematical model, explains most of the, not most, but more differences uh, uh, than any of the other traits is an expression used in English Canada that's actually in French, joie de vivre. But beyond that, what we found in the book, if you look behind or what lies behind this apparent joie de vivre, uh, because comparatively, it's not that English Canadians are unhappy uh, to any stretch of the imagination. If you look at the data uh, uh, globally, we are among the happiest countries in the world. But what distinguishes this, uh, this idea of the joie de vivre in Quebec is more about the here and now more than the joie de vivre. Quebecers actually are significantly different when it comes to wanting to live in the moment. I don't want to talk, uh, think about tomorrow. I don't want to plan ahead. Uh, it's too much effort, too much work. I just want to be here now and enjoy life right at this very moment. When we ask the question, this is just one of the 5,000 uh, data points that we looked at uh, for the book. When we ask the question, do you prefer living in the moment or preparing for the future? Now, mind you, preparing for the future is the one that people should have picked. But anyway, 74% of French Quebecers picked, I just want to live in the moment. If you compare that to the rest of the country, the majority actually selected, no, it's better to prepare for the future. Now, this element, again, both to marketers, but, but also to anybody that's involved in the supply chain from a marketing perspective needs to understand that what will attract Quebecers to an idea, a product or a service is tied to how or what's in it for me right now. What is the emotion that, that is driven when I look at your product or service? Uh, what effect is it having on me right now? Because Quebecers tend not to respond as well to elements that would appeal to reason, to rational arguments, to, you know, this is the better way of doing things. This is how you should plan uh, uh, for the future or plan your expenses or plan pretty much everything. I like to say whenever I'm presenting this data that if, if Quebecers were the mini wheat, you know, the cereal, they would have two frosty sides. It's very hard to appeal to that other side of Quebecers to make them think what they should be doing. Uh, they just want to know what they could be doing. Now, once you move beyond, we looked at the examples. Here's just one quick example. We could have put hundreds. There's, there's several in the book as well. But here's one uh, way that Sobeys, IGA in Quebec, actually tried to capture this subtle difference. In the rest of the country, they used a very popular, globally popular chef uh, with the motto, eat better, feel better, and do better. Now, behind or what lies behind the narrative of this ad is basically what I would call performance marketing. It's 
actually telling people how to be better at something. Um, in Quebec, probably IGA well understood that this will not go. Quebecers are not striving to improve for the future. They're just trying to indulge uh, and, and just basically feel the moment for what it is. That's why they opted for three chefs that are well known here uh, in Quebec. And the motto is basically just indulge. In other words, no element of this performance marketing aspect. Uh, they were trying to get at a different emotion, uh, talking to two different uh, populations. One example that we like to, to use as well to, uh, to exemplify this and, and, and this element of Quebecers just wanting to be in the present, in the moment, and just want to connect emotionally with everything they do and get involved with is, is a very simple fact. Uh, if you look at it uh, right now, Quebec represents 23% of the Canadian population or 22.6 now after the new, uh, the new census information coming out. Yet they represent 43% of swimming pools installed in the country. Now, if you're coming in from Toronto from out west and you sort of land uh, at Trudeau Airport, basically everybody's always wondering, what are all these sort of blue circles that I see everywhere pretty much? Well, there goes 43% uh, of swimming pools installed in Quebec. Mind you, summers are awfully short in Quebec. It's not necessarily all that reasonable to invest all of that money into a swimming pool. But it's because summers are so short that Quebecers absolutely want one. You need to take it all in uh, once it's happening. Actually, if you compare uh, 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 Quebec to North America, Quebec has more swimming pools per capita than Florida or California, where the climate actually sort of dictates having a swimming pool. Why the difference is because, you know, that summer only lasts about six to eight weeks. I need to take it all in. So the takeaway from this sort of here and now, more than the joie de vivre, it's, 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 it's different than that, is whenever you talk to Quebecers, it's very hard to use either performance marketing, appeal to reason. Uh, you need to remember they're short-term thinkers. Uh, they do not want to plan ahead. It sort of strikes a negative vibe in them. Uh, I like to say, replace every should uh, in, 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 in whatever you're communicating uh, to Quebecers and replace it with could. Uh, for that specific reason, they don't want to be reasonable because being reasonable is not necessarily an emotion that strikes them as being ultimately positive. So when you talk to them, you need to wonder, should I be talking differently to the Quebec market as opposed to the rest of the country? The second trait, and, and of course, all of these traits, and Jacques will talk about uh, that a little later on, are, are all sort of, it, to some extent, it's sort of related to one another, but I also communicate with one another. And another uh, trait that is important is the whole way that Quebecers perceive themselves as being very creative. They like to think that they are out of the box thinkers that do whatever they want, that basically uh, uh, will go off on tangents, that they don't need to follow the mold. Uh, and this basically strikes a very emotional chord uh, with Quebecers as well. I remember we did a survey for the, the city of Montreal when it was celebrating its 375th anniversary, which is a weird number to celebrate anyway. But uh, we asked the question in, in a survey to Montrealers, what is the one word that best describes Montreal? And creativity was by far the number one sort of winner. This is how Quebecers see themselves when they look at themselves in the mirror. Now, this creativity, it basically also feeds into other traits we'll see later on, but uh, Quebecers were basically sort of a cashless for, for the great, uh, uh, for the majority of their history. So they needed to build something out of nothing. They feel and believe they have to be creative to make it. Now, what this means from a marketing perspective, when we actually, actually look at it is, again, sort of talking about the joie de vivre uh, in a, a slightly different angle, they tend to lack self-discipline. Again, they're not long-term planners. Uh, they don't like to toe the party line. They like to step out of it, be sort of uh, on their own. They like to basically, you know, dance to a different beat some, some, somehow, both as employees and as consumers as well. Uh, they want to be their own boss, do their own thing. They tend to, uh, to frown at sort of cookie cutter solutions. They want everything personalized to them uh, because, again, they feel that they're a bit outside the box and not inside uh, that single box. 
And again, appealing to this creativity, this is what made the success of Michael's in this market, changing their slogan to incorporate the word creativity uh, in their tagline uh, at, at, has been sort of at the core of their success. And again, it's appealing to this basically, this, this sort of trait. Now this creativity also feeds into a third positive trait, which is the element of pride. This element of, uh, uh, of pride 30, 40 years ago was very sort of political. It was very basically behind the flag, behind that fleur de lis, but it's evolving uh, uh, through time. That sort of pride in the nation is still present. It's expressed differently uh, uh, politically today as opposed to then, uh, but it is still present. But slowly it is also shifting. This pride is pride in the entrepreneurial spirit of Quebecers, which again, in large part, is inspired by its creativity uh, as well. When we started to, to, uh, to measure this for the, the Institute for Entrepreneurship, uh, Quebec was last. About 12 years ago, Quebecers were last in terms of the intention to actually open up shop and to create their own business. 12 years later, they're actually ahead of the national average at 21%. Only BC uh, is ahead of Quebec in terms of the intention uh, to, to, uh, to build your own business. So this sort of shift in entrepreneurial spirit is, is due to the fact that over time, Quebecers have identified with, uh, whether it's the Cirque du Soleil, even Céline Dion, uh, some of their famous movie directors, uh, again, very sort of focused on the creative arts, uh, Moment Factory as well in its own sort of area, Whenever sort of Quebecers or Quebec entrepreneurs become successful outside of Quebec, this is really gets Quebecers connected to who they are. So this element of pride has, sh has shifted over time. But older historical sort of grassroots elements of pride are still present. We were talking about uh, uh, pride in the nation, uh, in the flag, but there's also an element of pride that I think is specific to Quebec. If you look at media in Canada, the number one to uh, uh, topic when you look at news covered in the media in the rest of the country is tied to politics. In Quebec, politics is in fifth place. Hockey is number one. But beyond that, it's not hockey. I personally believe other Canadians across the country probably like hockey, the sport, more than Quebecers. But Quebecers are tuned in to the logo you see on screen. It's because of what the Montreal Canadiens represented uh, that is an element of pride. For the longest time, for my parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, on the ice is one area where French Quebecers would win, where they would beat everybody else. And again, feeds into this element of pride uh, that is very important. And even today, even though the team is not doing all that well, uh, this element of connecting and, 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 and the symbol of what the logo of the Montreal Canadian represents is tied to this element of pride that Quebecers look for ways to celebrate. And if your brand has a way that it can help Quebecers celebrate what they believe is their difference, then you're maybe one up on the competition. You should also think about if, if you have staff in Quebec, Quebecers are great at wanting to be intrapreneurs. This element of being proud of, uh, proud of their own work, of doing their own thing, of having sort of autonomy. For example, Quebec is one of the only places in the world where the only person that can own a pharmacy is a pharmacist by law. So this element of I want my autonomy, I want my uh, few inches where I decide where I am the boss is something that actually uh, gets Quebecers to be even more productive. And we're seeing as this sort of pride changes into something new today, uh, that there are opportunities for businesses out there as well. Now, going over to this sort of neutral trait that we cannot categorize as being, as being positive or negative is the fact that Quebecers are a consensus seeker. We use the sheep as an example uh, because Quebec is very prone to the herd effect uh, in marketing. Once they see that others are jumping on the bandwagon, then they will want to jump in as well. And this, this herd effect is something that can be created through media, through a great strategy, in a way that's probably less expensive in this province than in any other market in North America. We've got to ask a question, and majority of Quebecers are saying, to me, it's more important that we reach a consensus that I be told that I won the argument. Um, 
I remember a, a PhD candidate from France told me, the only thing I, I hate about Quebec is that you can't pick an argument in this province. All of your sentences start with, we oui, may, yes, but. So Quebecers always want to find how they can actually establish a consensus with another person before they actually will want to state their difference. He said, in France, it's much better. The arguing is a national sport in France. Every sentence over there starts with no may, no but. So they state opposition before trying to reach a consensus. In this province, everybody is more comfortable when everybody agrees on something, which makes Quebec very hard to convince when it comes to new ideas uh, and, and very bold ideas uh, as well. One or, or the best way to, uh, uh, to uh, talk about that is the show called The Bye Bye. Every year now since the early 60s, there is a comedy show on December 31st at 11 o'clock at night uh, that's been going on for 50 years. Uh, the, the, the ratings for this are four times what the Super Bowl would get in the rest of the country, uh, and let alone the Stanley Cup finals. Uh, for example, Bye Bye 2021 this year racked up a total of 92% of the viewing audience were tuned in to that single show all at the same time. This is 3.9 million viewers live and 4.3 million viewers total. There is no show on Canadian television can, that can even come close uh, to these types of ratings. Why? Is because Quebecers, after the show is over, all want to get together and debate if it was good or not, if it was bad or not, what, you know, what is the sketch that you preferred, uh, what is the one that you hated the most. It becomes a collective event. And this is where the herd comes together. Interestingly enough, the only other place worldwide where there is the same exact same tradition of a late night, December 38, uh, 31st uh, sort of comedy show is actually in Iceland. I will not pronounce the name of the show that you see on screen, but that's the only other place globally that has this sort of late night, uh, uh, December 31st comedy show. Now, if you think about it, whenever we say, and, and Jacques will get to that, that Quebecers are a bit insular, talk about Iceland, a very small Nordic island of a very small population, and they are the only ones speaking their language worldwide. If you think Icelanders are insular, maybe you could take, think about Quebecers the same way. Now, what this means is, this photo is actually from Iceland. This is sort of a living room on December 31st watching that show. And I bet you this is exactly what all of my December 31s actually were like growing up. Everybody, everything stops for people to watch that show. What it means is that they need to feel, or Quebecers want to feel the need that they're part of something, of a movement, of something that's actually that, that it sort of drives them and moves them towards the herd, that they somehow they can't do anything about it. It's just overwhelming to a certain extent. Uh, of course, they want to jump on board, but they will not, they will not jump first. They, they're waiting for the bandwagon to draw them in. They like everything that seems, looks, and feels consensual, authentic, organic, uh, that they're somehow being consulted. It's true for them as employees, as it is for them as consumers. Now I'll turn it over uh, uh, to Jacques, who will talk to you about what we call the negative traits, but they're actually very important from a marketing perspective as well. Jacques. Oh, I think you're still on mute, Jacques, sorry. I, I, I know. Okay, I'm, I'm back. Thank you, thank you, Christian. Uh, as, as mentioned before, earlier in the presentation, Jean-Marc mentioned that in order to crack the Quebec code, you got to understand the seven traits uh, around which the book was written. Um, now, those tray, among those three, as Christian mentioned, three of them are positive, one is neutral, but three are flat negative, uh, which shows that the book is not complacent. It's basically factual. Um, it's my task to relay those three negative traits. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's important for you to understand uh, that, of course, there are some negative features in the way Quebecers think about themselves. Uh, it's important for you to understand that for two reasons. Uh, the first one is that uh, it might help you to become a little more tolerant uh, toward their, those negative traits. But also, it's important to understand them because you don't want to step on anybody's 
foot. Um, so to understand exactly that negative dimension of Quebecer is essentially what we're getting into. Um, while talking about the, um, the consensual uh, effect, Christian mentioned that basically Quebecers don't want, don't want to be the first one to jump in anything. Uh, they want to jump on board, but they don't want to be the first one to do so. Well, this is exactly the non-committal uh, dimension of it. Uh, next, yep. Uh, essentially, <laughs> and it shows in so many surveys, Jean-Marc likes to mention this, this, this sentence that he heard so many times uh, while conducting surveys. I'm not sure whether I'm still undecided or for Quebecer, it is urgent to wait. Well, just to understand that Quebecers are not, are not really commit, they, they just, they are non-committal. Uh, it brings along a lot of takeaways. Um, one example of that, just to understand how much they're not really committed to a whole lot of things, is their donation uh, behavior. Um, they, Quebecers are, and by far, less prone to give to charities than the rest of Canada. And this is so, even if you control for revenue, taxation level, um, for, for Quebecers, the logic is, I am giving to the state, i.e. the provincial state, it's their task to take care of all the needs. I don't want to be part of it directly. Of course, we give, but way less than what you would find in the rest of Canada. Um, and, and there are reasons for that. Uh, essentially, traditionally, Quebecers have been following for guidelines, at first from the Catholic Church, then from the provincial government, and more recently from influencers. Um, much so in Quebec than what you would find elsewhere in the rest of Canada again. Uh, thus, you got to understand a couple of things. Uh, they had an issue with commitment. They will not jump, at least certainly not being the first ones on the bandwagon. Um, their behavior might not always match their words. They require more face time, uh, the handshake over the memo. And I would, I would carry that all the way up to, if you are doing currently business in Quebec, you might have noticed that everything is always takes always more time. It's it's always a little more um, curb, uh, uh, harder. It's it's cumbersome uh, to do business in Quebec than in the rest of Canada because because most people you will be talking to will want to gain a consensus among themselves because they personally don't want to be committed at first hand. It's something that makes Quebec what it is. The second negative trait has to do with being a victim. Um, and this one is crucial to understand. When, encounter, uh, when you encounter an attractive offer, uh, is your first inst instinct to trust or is it to distrust it? 73% in Quebec will say, I would, I would distrust versus 56% in the rest of Canada. We are we're by four more, by far, I'm sorry, more suspicious. That's key. Uh, Quebecers are fast at portraying themselves as victims for a whole lot of reasons, um, or as potential victims. It is, in our way of doing things, it is, a way of thinking to seek for there got to be a menace. There got to be a perceived insult somewhere. There got to be a scam for me to be careful about. Let me give you an example of that. This is this is something that you've probably seen yourself a couple of months ago. If we if we go back to September 9th, uh, because if you want to switch to the next uh, slide. Yeah, 
Okay, I'm, I'm sure that you will remember this debate. September 9th, uh, the debate is the first English debate for the Canadian election. Sachi Curl, the, uh, the, um, the interviewer the, uh, from the Ingus Reid Institute, asked a question to uh, Yves-François Blanchet, the head of the Bloc Québécois, about Bills 21 and 96. And essentially, the question was, uh, are you denying that Quebec has a problem with racism? The very next morning, all members, all members, all of them, all co parties confounded of the L'Assemblée Nationale, the National Assembly, the Quebec Parliament, all of them were unanimous to condemn the question, saying that it was, it was an insult that we had been victimized. What's kind of interesting here is that all those questions, all of that debate, the same question that was asked at the beginning of the debate had been very, very much part of, uh, of the local debate several months before. We had been very at ease with insulting each other, using the terms racism, uh, um, 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 discrimination among ourselves. And that's the point. Quebecers are very, very good at telling each other their basic uh, their basic quality and defaults, um, and we don't take and we don't take that as insults. But the moment this comes from outside of the tribe, we, as a community, as a group, have a tendency to think that we have been victimized, and this is very much part of what our society is all about. So basically, if you think about take away, take take takeaways, it's always somebody else's fault. Rarely among ourselves, always coming from outside of the tribe. Winning their trust will take longer. Again, they want genuine one-on-one -on -one relationship. Quebecer trust people, trust people, not institutions. And this is important because if you look at several of the, the major advertising made in Quebec, there's a lot of humor in those advertisements. Uh, humor that very often will discredit the, um, uh, either the company or even the client, always made as a joke. Among ourselves, it works. Nobody will call, I'm a victim. Take the same advertising made from somebody from outside of the tribe, and it might be a um, two-edged sword. The second negative trait has to do with the villager. Um, we use the term villager in our book, but actually the real word could be think as, as being parochial. Quebec society is highly parochial. We like to think that we are among ourselves, and among ourselves has a lot to do with the smallest common denominator. So let, let me share with you uh, two, two quick um, um, data points. In Quebec, there are 1,131 cities and municipalities. In Ontario, for a population which is 75% bigger, we are 8 million here, 14 million in Ontario, there are 444 cities and municipalities. Essentially, in Quebec, we have a very hard time saying we are going to merge two small communities because we belong to a community, we are very parochial, which is obviously different than the community next to ours. Um, which means that for a marketing purpose, if you're thinking in terms of distribution network, if you're talking about channels, you will be caught, no matter who you are, uh, no matter what your company is, you will be caught with more stores than you would have elsewhere in Canada. When, when Lowe's bought, took over Rona, they realized that, saying, realizing that, you know, the Rona in Victoriaville is, by definition, very different than the Rona in, the Rona in Drummondville. 
uh, two cities that are very much next each to each other. Okay, so basically being parochial means essentially that we know very little about the, your, your stars. Uh, if you ask Quebecers who the people that you have on your screen are, most people wouldn't know. But conversely, if you ask Quebecers about the next slides, they, they know all of them, but conversely, most Canadians don't know. We are very, very much parochial in the sense that we are extremely at ease among ourselves at the smallest expression, the smallest expression being my village being different than yours. If you look at the next one, well, it has some consequences. 25% more efficient when you use a Quebec spoke person, especially if you are about to use a uh, humor trait in your ad. If you take a extremely well-known character or person, comedian, actor from Canada, and use that person, especially with a bad translation on top of it, uh, it's, I mean, you are going to, you, you are, you are going, you're not going to appear on anybody's radar. Well, essentially, this is true for a lot of, uh, of, of, of spoke person. This is true for a lot of comedian. You just don't take the same one. The one I like a lot is this one about intact. The one you know, if you've been looking at ads, the rest of the Canada is the one on your left side. The one we know is the one on the right side. This comedian, although he is very often aloof, uh, makes wonder as a spoke person in this province. You would have taken that nice lady, it wouldn't have worked here. And this shows in our media consumption. Um, essentially in Quebec, we consume six hours more on a weekly basis television than the rest of Canada, pretty much pretty much at par with desktop and mobile, pretty much at, at par with, uh, with radio, newspapers and magazine a little higher in rest, than the rest of Canada. Basically, what this means is that we like to see ourselves in everything that we read or that we watch. We have a common cultural landscape one which is extremely strong and well knit. This example that uh, Christian gave you about the the bye bye, the, 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 this this program which is being shown um, just before a new New Year Eve, is is essentially a big big um, uh, testimony about that reality. Uh, it might be a it might be hard to understand how that parochial trait. A place here because if you look at the next slide, uh, when you look at Quebec, if you look at Quebec only on on the basis that you that you're coming to Montreal uh, on a frequent basis, um, Montreal is not Quebec. It's 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 it's, it's rather different. Fifty five percent of Montrealers have French as their first language. Majority of Montrealers are bilingual. A lot of them are trilingual. But keep in mind that outside Greater Montreal, 95% are French speakers, and a majority of them um, hardly speak English. So of course they they are going to relate to their basic fundamental culture to do business and 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 and, and to act as consumers. Takeaways. They always want to put a face on things, and that face has to be well known. It has; they have to be familiar with that face. They need to feel that they are a special group, a different kind. They believe that they are different. It comes with being somehow parochial. But Quebec is getting more heterogeneous. Quebec is also the kingdom of co-ops, mutual. The small guy joining forces with the other small guys. It's bottom up here. You got to realize that all of the retail, and this is what I've been doing 
all of my professional life retailing. Retail in Quebec was built bottom up, while in the rest of Canada, it has always, not always, but very often been built top down. We don't have a lot of corporate strong uh, stores here. What we have is a lot of affiliations and affiliative structures. Okay, last slide. Four positive trade, uh, I'm sorry, three positive trade, one neutral, three negative ones. They are not independent of each other. As a matter of fact, each one is feeding into the next one. We're going to start with the most important one, the yellow one, is what it means. Quebecers like to think about being happy in life. In order to do so, they will have a tendency to be consensus seeker because when you're in the consensus, you don't fight. You, you're among yourself. Uh, everybody's basically saying the same thing. So you keep your joie de vie. If you want to keep, if you want to keep that consensus, well, make sure that you're not too committal because being too committal might have a negative impact on being consensual. If you are non-committal, you're not, you're not the one who's taking the decisions. If you're not the one who's taking the decision, somebody else will take them for you. So this is one of the reasons, if not the major reason, why Quebecers have a tendency to feel victimized. If you feel victimized, the consequence is that you will basically go back into your cocoon. You are going to be, you're going to go back to the village. You are going to be more parochial. If you do so, eventually you will have to get out of that. And this is where creativity very often comes from. Creativity in Quebec is very much present, but it comes from necessity. It comes from necessity because at one point, there's a, there's a tipping point, basically, that makes Quebecers want to do something else than just being um, among themselves. When you do so, and when you are successful in doing so, um, you, you generate some pride. Uh, there is that proudness factors that come with it. If you are proud, well, then you can feed back into that joie de vivre seven traits that each of them are extremely well detailed extremely well backed up by data the interesting thing is that all of those traits feed into the next one and essentially this will explain how to crack the quarterback code Shama? Voilà. Good, mon son, and mon son était coupé. Là. Ça, ça va. Good, excellent. Ben, voyez, here, guys, uh, you could see here the, the main difference. In the chart you're having, the two main threats are joie de vivre and victim. You know, they are what we call the yin and the yang of our culture. And the main reason is because Quebec is a people of survival. Survival, of survival has been the common thread of the Quebec for nearly, nearly 500 years, you know? We're only 8 million of French speaking, and around us, we have 350 uh, million English speakers. So, Quebecers are afraid of disappearing, so better enjoy it. <laughs> Essentially, this is our source code. So, now you know all our secrets, you know our emotion, attitude, behaviors, our anxieties, our hopes. So, and I hope you appreciate and that you will use these seven factors uh, at your advantage. Uh, as you could see, you know, you will receive the next chart, please. You will receive uh, an email. If you want to have a copy of the book, we'll send you the copy of the books uh, of the book for free. And also you will receive a record of this, uh, of this session. So you will have access to all this information. That's the way we're working at Leger. We want to share as much as possible content to help you to succeed. If you have any questions, guys, it's starting now. You could ask questions. Christian will moderate the question session. And uh, feel free, guys, to ask questions or to ask questions by email after after facts if you if you want it. And I hope you appreciated this content.
Christian? All right. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Uh, yeah, we still have about five minutes or five or seven minutes for, for questions if you want to drop them into the question box. Um, if any outstanding questions uh, are, are still there at the end of the webinar, Jacques or myself will answer you by email. Uh, it'll be our pleasure to do so. So if you do have, okay, um, so interesting, thank you. Uh, what would be your top three strategies or recommendations if you wanted to implant a global brand uh, in Quebec? That's a, that's a big one, Chuck. Yeah. A global, uh, I, I assume we're talking about a global brand across Canada, but also including Quebec. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that the product or the service can be pretty much standardized across Canada. Um, with, with, with very few exceptions, but the way to the way to um, to portray it, the way to advertise it, has to be localized. Make sure that, as as we've mentioned, make sure that you you're using uh, a, a a local spoke person. Uh, that's that's fundamental. Otherwise, you're going to be perceived to be uh, eventually like like an intruder. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna take way longer. For your product to be understood the next thing is especially if it's a product you got to realize that your your uh, your distribution network your your uh, your channels might be a little more complex here in quebec for reasons that we've mentioned the uh, there's one that uh, i'll take that one jock if you don't mind how are quebecers attitude uh, change uh, or changing during covid one thing that was interesting, we conducted four surveys pretty much almost at the same time as, as each of the four waves uh, of the pandemic uh, across the country. And it was interesting to see how little difference there was between the Quebec uh, and the national data on how our values were changing collectively during this period. This goes back in a way to the 71% that Jean-Marc says. 71% of data points, we are within the margin of error of each other uh, from that perspective. So the the the, the fundamental uh, uh, trends of uh, this 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 um, this drive towards wellness, well-being, um, a better balance between work and life, uh, all of these elements of of wanting to reduce anxiety in our lives. This is sort of a common thread across the country. Uh, one area that there was a bit of difference when you look at the overall trends um, is the fact that Quebecers kind of used the pandemic to close the digital divide that used to exist. Prior to the pandemic, Quebec was always behind a few percentage points and sometimes in the double digits in terms of adoption of certain digital behaviors. Because of stores closures and, and uh, we had it rougher here in the province of Quebec with store closures than in many regions of the country, um, basically Quebecers needed to catch up uh, in terms of the digital divide. And when you look at the data uh, post pandemic, uh, adoption of online behaviors when it comes to purchasing and all that quebecers have largely caught up by now so this is one area where we've seen a shift uh, throughout the pandemic mm -hmm. one question here that i'm looking at because we're trying to whiz through them as we only have about five minutes left um ah uh, uh jacques i don't know if you wanted to, to look at this one with not being committal uh, how do your loyalty programs perform in quebec <laughs> I like this one. Uh, they perform extremely well, but it takes a little longer to implement them because, as we mentioned, it's not that it's not that we don't want to jump on the bandwagon. We just don't want to make the initial commitment. So people are going to people are systematically more suspicious to start with, but when there's a herd movement, they will get to it. So. Again, uh, that's the reason why I mentioned that it's important to understand that trade, uh, if, for, if for nothing else, uh, only to be a little more tolerant where you're going to do business here, because especially loyalty programs will take a little longer uh, to implement. Unless, of course, you have a spoke person which is local and so convincing that he will basically um, pass, pass, pass the message that um, it's it's worth uh, investing and in being committed to it. Yeah, I well, I don't know if we'll be able to get through all of the questions live. I, of course, we'll we'll uh, um, we'll respond to them uh, via email afterwards. Um, 
I'm just trying to look here if we have a final one. Some of them are actually excellent, but will require a couple more than a couple of minutes to answer. Um, doing local marketing, local sports person is usually much more expensive per capita in Quebec versus the rest of Canada. Is there a budget spending ratio uh, you would recommend uh, using in Quebec? So how do you deal with the element of of cost, but also maybe I would th throw in, Jog, the element of risk associated with using a spokesperson. They may get caught up in the Me Too phenomenon or something else. But it, uh, so is this still the strategy in Quebec, the use of the spokesperson? It's still very much part of it. Uh, but you got you to gotta realize, though, that um, once, once Quebecers have adopted you, um, their loyalty might be a little higher on the long run if they feel that you are part of uh, their life. You got to realize that, uh, and there are few uh, ex ex fascinating examples. When Walmart moved into Canada, a lot of analysts, and, and none of us were among those analysts, a lot of analysts were suspicious about the capacity of Walmart to break through Quebec. I wasn't, Christian wasn't, and Jean-Marc wasn't. Um, and, it's, and essentially, this is what happened. Walmart has been doing a tremendous job in Quebec, and as a matter of fact, still today, some of the most profitable Walmarts are here in Quebec. But the way they did it was really outstanding, because essentially, they portrayed themselves as being Walmart, of course, but as being very much part of the Quebec landscape. They've used spoke person uh, that were local. Uh, they they basically make it, they made a campaign, uh, uh, rightfully so, uh, um, proving that they were buying a lot of their uh, uh, products and especially produced here in Quebec. And it basically brought um, a, a high level of loyalty. So. There, there's a way. Uh, of course, initially, you're right. It's going to cost a little more, but in the long run, it, the, the payback is there. Yeah, I would say also that today, in the, in the, um, uh, if we look at influencers, which tend to be a bit less expensive from that perspective, something I've seen about about Quebec media is is that if you're if you're a well-known online influencer, you can cross over into uh, mainstream media fairly easily, and the same the other way around. There's a lot of of uh, uh of influencers as well that are very popular or became popular through uh mainstream uh media so it, it, it's possible to actually sort of play both sides uh while keeping costs in in, in check another way Jacques, that, that you mentioned as well for the longest time canadian entire in quebec played it a bit differently Be, behind uh, and Quebecers love Canadian Tire just as much as the rest of Canada but below the big Canadian Tire and the big Maple Leaf it was always managed by Jacques Nantel. So yep. they, they would give you two messages. We're the big national brand you love, but we're also managed by this local guy that you probably know as well. So they were trying again to play on, on both sides, appealing to sort of the, the very local grassroots aspect that Quebecers like, which was the, the manager is the guy next door, uh, yep. along with, with the big brand potential that Canadian Tire represented anyway. Um, I think what we'll do, we will, we will answer your questions via email afterwards because we are running out of time. This leaves but, but you only... yeah, mo most, yeah. most of the answers are in the book. <laughs> yeah, and you can read it on your way if between Toronto and Montreal. That flight is an hour. That book should be read in 45 minutes. There you go. So we'll leave it at that because you only have three minutes before your one o'clock Teams meeting for, for a lot of you, I'm sure. Uh, and again, thank you for being here. So on behalf of Jean-Marc, of Jacques and myself, I would like to thank you for spending your lunchtime with us. Uh, of course, more than happy to send you a copy of the book. Have a read. If you have any other outstanding questions, issues, concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Have a good afternoon.